Hello there, you're watching Vilhelm Miniatures. I'm currently running a Kickstarter campaign with these uh, miniatures, so you can follow the link in the description to find out more and to back it if you like the look of these. It's called Woods and Witches and the theme is witches, so yes, this is a bunch of witch characters. And the monster, because I felt that I had to include the monster, uh, because I like making monsters. So four witches and the big monster. But in the Kickstarter you can also get this uh, a DIY kit for like a hunted hut or a witch's cabin or what have you. You can use it for uh, what you want. And this is what I will be using in this episode. In my previous two Kickstarters, I've been using this one as a backdrop for the pictures for the campaign. Uh, and you can see how I made this from a book uh, in a previous episode. I'll leave a link here. I found this nice box that I'm going to use as a base for everything. And it's going to be themed after the woods and witches. So I'm going to make a little witch's cabin here and have some uh, trees and woods and just random textures in the background, I think. Uh, other than the box and these doors and windows, I'm going to use very simple materials, mostly cardboard uh, and, you know, ground texture. So, yes, this is something you can do as well uh, without having to get some fancy materials. Of course, you will have to back my Kickstarter to get this fabulous DIY kit. So, you know, check out the link in the description. 11. So this is the height of the box. Uh, I want my cabin to be taller. Uh, I'm not sure how to place the windows yet, but maybe something like this. I'm not using a ruler or anything here. I'm just drawing out the design, simple design. I don't know, something like this. I'm just going to cut it out and see how it looks uh, on the box. Let's see if it works. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good size. Could have been taller too, but uh, no, I don't want to go too overboard. It's nice that the roof starts as the box ends because then I can have some treetops sticking over the edge to make it uneven and then we'll have like a nice uh, silhouette to some kind of background I can put back here. All right, let's glue the pieces together. After renovating a piece of a cabin, I found this dried piece of balsa wood that's been outside and it's completely dried and warped. It was flat at some point, I think, but yeah, it breaks very easily and I think it's going to be nice to use this for some additional details for the front of the house. Maybe something like this would be, would be nice. I added a few strips of balsa wood and I think it's starting to look quite nice. It's going to be cool, definitely, to have this as a backdrop for the witches. I'm going to start to apply some textures. I'm going to apply this in several layers, but I think it's easier to uh, start the application before I glue everything in place. So yeah, I'm just going to go and do the first layer here. And I have some very, very fine sand that I think is going to make a nice grout texture for the, for the house. Uh, the sand is too fine, so it's going to take forever. Uh, instead, I'm just going to apply some garden dirt uh, mixed with Mod Podge. And I'm going to use more Mod Podge than I usually use uh, when I make bases. This will make the texture a little bit softer um, than the bases. Uh, so yeah, I hope, the, I hope it's going to be different enough. I'm going to cover this entire thing in uh, shingles, so it doesn't matter if it's a little bit wonky. I'm happy with the roof shape as it looks right now, but it's going to be a little difficult to put down the shingles when, uh, when it's so uneven on the surface. 
So I'm going to cover parts of it with some painter's tape, just to have uh, an even surface for the next step. For the shingles, I will be using this uh, balsa wood again, just making some thin strips and then break them down into appropriate sizes. Laying down the pieces of balsa wood with some PVA glue, just dipping the tip tips in there and laying them in like a, a pattern, trying to have like every other uh, every other row overlapping more or less, but. These are very uneven in size, so it's probably just going to be a mess of uh, tiny wooden pieces. Which is also going to look fine, I think, and fitting for the theme. Balsa wood is very fragile and, and porous, so it breaks very easily. Which makes it good for making uh, stuff like this, because yeah, I had to break like a thousand pieces for this roof, but... Uh, it's not very durable, so it's nice to coat it with something when it's uh, when it's ready. The door is a little bit high up, so I'm making a little staircase just by putting down some pieces of cork. It's time to cover up this uh, background here, so I'm going to glue down some uh, roots and, and twigs that I found. I will probably have to add some more twigs, but first I'm going to fill in the gaps uh, with some air drying clay. I'm making some rough texture with this uh, stiff brush and some water. Probably going to add some texture after it's dry too, uh, using some just some regular ground texture or crackle paint, but uh, I think it's nice to have several layers of different texture uh, so that it looks a bit different from the ground at least. I'm going to do a bit more filling and add some more textures, but I think this is a nice uh, start for like a big uh, ruined tree that's uh, pushed against the witch's hut. I think this opening is very nice, so I'm going to round it off a little bit more, but keep it like this and paint it very dark. Uh, but what I want to achieve with this backdrop is that I want to be able to take different pictures uh, depending on where I place the character. So I don't want more trees back here, I want something else so that I can like have different backdrops depending on where I Photograph the miniatures when it's like a full set. I will of course use, use all of it, but when it's just a single miniature It would be nice to have uh, different backgrounds So I have a few options uh, One is this huge piece of bark that I found uh, a while ago and I was planning to use it as a base for something, but it might fit here as well I'm not sure how it's very brittle. So of course I need to soak it in some uh, PVA glue Placing it like this would also work quite well, because it's nice to have a bit of overhang so that the miniature uh, is able to be placed uh, like in different depths of the backdrop. Here I lose a little bit of that because I've pushed the tree too far out, but it's still possible to put it in the opening of the cave. But here it would maybe be nice to keep this almost just uh, at the wall where it is so that I can have the, the witch is kind of creeping out of the forest. I also have these uh, mushrooms, which are nice, and giant mushrooms kind of feel very witchy, so maybe I could place them somewhere too. I glued the mushrooms in place and used some air drying clay to just smooth everything out. And then I added texture everywhere. I probably have to add some more texture. Uh, it's difficult to see now how much it covers before it's dry. But while I wait for the first layer to dry, I can start to base coat uh, some of the areas that are more or less finished. So I'm just going to put some black and brown paint on it. 
Ideally, I should wait for this to dry, I guess, but uh, I don't know. I want to get painting tonight, so yeah. It's better to leave everything to dry for some hours, I think, than to leave the texture and then having to wait for the first few layers of paint to dry. Uh, this is also going to mix a little bit with the layer of PVA glue that's everywhere, so it's going to stick very nicely, I think. If I were a smarter person, I would probably mix the paint with the texture and the glue before applying it, because I have basically gone over everything once already with the with glue, with a brush, so yeah. I'm not going to paint the windows and the doors because they are resin, so I'm going to have to uh, spray them uh, to make sure that the paint is going to stick. After texturing, it's time to add some uh, paint, and I'm going to do the first few layers using uh, sprays, and here I just have a collection. I have undercoated the miniature or the backdrop in black, and here I have some grey, black, some off-white colors, and yeah. I'm just going to add some different tones around on the piece before adding actual paints. Alright, let's see if we can introduce some color to this thing. Uh, starting out with some brown. I think that's a good, like, second base coat for everything, basically. The ground is going to be green and the house will be off-white. Uh, and yeah, the trees will probably be some grayish brown tone, but I think brown works as like a mid tone for for everything, so. The different spray tones I used were more or less different types of white and off-white and beige, so didn't really make that much of a difference, uh, but I at least now have a zenithal highlight and a good starting point for the painting process. And uh, while making this one, I have been painting some versions of uh, the miniatures for uh, the for the Kickstarter. Uh, this is the finger finger creep with all the fingers. And to start, I think I'm just going to match the base or match like the, the ground texture uh, with this base color here, which is just uh, greens and browns in a dry brush and some washes. The first layer of brown isn't really dry yet, but I'm blending in some uh, green just to have some variations before I start the dry brushing. I think some blue green shingles will look good, so I'm using this uh, looper called green as a base coat for the roof. Also going to wipe away the tips of some of them to make them a little bit worn. I've given everything a very light dry brush of uh, pure white just to hit all of the textured edges and make them stand out. Uh, but now it's time to do some washes and add some shadows. And to start, I'm going to use some uh, camo shade and sepia shades for the base or the ground texture. I'm applying these washes at the same time. Uh, varying a little bit where I put them down. So I'm not mixing them, I'm just uh, putting them down. Uh, yeah, <laughs> at the same time. I think it looks nice that the ground is a little bit uh, natural or varying in tone, so. Not completely green, but the sepia gives it a little bit of brown, which is nice. The green is also quite a lot darker, so I'm focusing the green uh, closer to the back. Uh, and the round where we have the trees and the house, so where we would have more shadows. I went back and forth with the dry brushing and washes until I was happy with the result. I think this thing turned out quite nice, so let's take a few pictures and see if it works as a backdrop. 
Remember to follow the link in the description to check out my current Kickstarter if you want to have some terrain like this or if you want to paint some witches. It's pretty cool, so go check it out. Alright, cheers, bye.